Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to Bike Rider TV. Today I've been out testing Ducati's new Monster 1100 EVO, or if you want to add another couple of acronyms, it's got ABS and DTC as well. So what's changed in the new Monster? Pretty much everything really. The 2011 model, for the first time, they've got 100 horsepower out of this engine, which most of us call a V-twin, but in Italian it's an L-twin because it's that way, not up and down. It's got a, about 100 Newton meters of torque, so it's a really lively ride. Now Ducati have chosen to call it a Monster. It's a bit of a marketing phrase because as far as a Monster you're expecting something that's beastly ugly. This most certainly is not. Now part of the superb handling package that the Evo 1100 is, is that set of upside down Marzocchi fully adjustable front forks. And attached to those, Brembo monoblock calipers, and these ones got ABS. You can turn it on or off, but even when you've got them on, you've got to be braking really hard before they get in the way. In fact, for most people, you just leave them on. Now that big black monstrous tank, pardon the pun, is actually only 13 and a half litres. The front half is all airbox, and you can actually hear the fuel injection and the engine noise coming up through that front part. It's a little bit disconcerting, but it's made up for by the big booming exhaust. How they make those Euro 3 compliant, I don't know, but good on them. As only Ducati do, they lie their V-twin down a wee bit. This one, if you notice, there's air fins on it, so it is air cooled, so it's got that sort of old school cool, matched to modern electronic fuel injection. It puts out 100 horsepower at 7,500 RPM. What's really cool about it though is that it puts out its maximum torque only 1,500 RPM lower, which means you've got this wonderful surge right through the mid-range that makes this thing surprisingly agile and quick. Now the Monster 1100 Evo has got all the nice bits that you'd expect from a Ducati. That single-sided swing arm looks fantastic. And those dual pipes give it a nice, big, chesty, booming voice. The styling is really quite intricate. There's nice red stitching on that seat. There's a cover on this, so well, when you're riding on your own, you can look even smarter. The tail tidy, well, it's not quite as racy looking as the rest of it. There's a vicious rumor going around that there's two 10 mil bolts under here. If you undo those, the bottom eight inches disappears. Now, if you happen to ride pillion on your partner's bike quite a lot, and you're looking at this, it's got foot pegs, not much of a seat unless you take into account that little bump. Don't despair, you undo the Allen keys on the side and that seat cowling comes off and it's actually a one piece seat. It's not really racy, it's comfortable, it's practical and the Monster is a really nice bike to up. Ergonomically, the Monster 1100 Evo is an absolute stunner. It's got an 810mm seat height, so it's going to fit whether you're short or tall. The levers are span adjustable, so it doesn't matter what size hand span you've got, you're covered. The dash is nice, it's clean, it's simple, and the functions on it, there's lap times, there's all that sort of stuff. Traction control is either on or off, rather than the eight levels that you get on, say, the 1198. But it's also kind of discreet. When you're riding, unless you look down, you don't see it. In fact, you see nothing in front of you. It's a nice, clean, clear, pure ride. And if you don't want to see anything at all, you just want to feel like you're flying, the Monster is a really nice ride. I know there's lots of rumours about Italian bikes and mirrors, but this one breaks the tradition. These things actually work. You look in there and you can see what's behind you. I know a lot of sports bikes, realistically their mirrors are nice fancy places to hang the indicators. These are really nice. They're vibe free, the bike's not. The uh, reservoir is here for your brake fluid or your clutch fluid. They're a bit like a martini, they get shaken, not stirred. But then again, they're built for it, so once you get used to the fact that they move around a wee bit, it's all good. With a fairly short wheelbase of 1450mm, it's a very nippy handler. It's nice and stable, in fact it's one of the best handling naked bikes out on the market. And at $22,790, it's 
it's extremely good value because it's got that brand prestige, it's got the cool looks, it's got the sound, it's got it made. So there you have it, trust the Italians to make a good looking monster.